Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Session 2 of Fallout Frozen Atom, an actual play of Fallout 2D20's Winter of Atom module. My name is ELH the Game Master, and I'm excited to have all of you back at the table and all of you back in the viewership. Just a few quick reminders before we do player introductions. The first thing is that it has been a while since I've run Fallout, so expect me to get some rules wrong, including something we'll handle when we start play in regards to the survival stuff, because we did a little bit of things there wrong, but it's a quick fix, shouldn't be too much of an issue. The other announcement is that sometime between now and about July 8th, I will be releasing my superhero tabletop role-playing game, uh, also using the 2D20 system, uh, Titanic Triumph. And you can go ahead and get the quick start rules on DriveThruRPG at the moment. But I'm hoping the cover art will finally be done for Titanic Triumph. And I'll be able to release it before like July 8th. Uh, other than that, I don't really have anything else going on. But let's get introductions from the players and we'll get started. So, uh, Saxy Guitar, what you got going on? Yeah, uh, I'm Saxy Guitar. You can find me on uh, ELH's Discord or just on the uh, Fallout 2D20 community Discord. Feel free to message me if you have any questions. I am playing her Professor Clayman. I am a scientist that focuses on plant life who originated from the Dakota area. Very nice. Golden Octopus. I'm Golden Octopus. I will be playing Brother Hugh. Uh, Brother Hugh is a child of Adam uh, off from the Westish area. And uh, Adam has brought him to the Boston Commonwealth. All right. And then last but not least, Mukies. Hi, I'm Mukies, and I play Raging Kate, um, the very cheerful, lovable uh, raider who, um, you know, originated from that area right outside of Diamond City and um, recently kicked out looking for a new crew and uh, looking for some things to destroy. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And uh, how's the audio levels, everybody? Is everybody uh, audible before we begin? Because this is when I can change it, so then uh, mid-play. So let me know if audio levels are okay. As I'm waiting on audio levels from chat, let's do housekeeping before we start the story. So one thing we did wrong was hunger and thirst. So I did the math ahead of time. If you all can deduct uh, two drinks from your uh, inventory, unless you're using purified water, in which case you only deduct one, and then if you are uh, hungry, uh, so you should be able to take out, if it's raw pre-packed food, you take out two things. If you're eating cooked food, it's just the one. So make okay. sure to do that while we're waiting for people to tell us about audio. Uh, I have no water currently or any. Uh, I gave you a purified water. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. All right. And, uh, I still have five more dirty. Okay. Um, I, I drank it then. <laughs> I so forgot carrots? that I drank it. <laughs> what do they count as? Uh, say again. What do carrots count as? Uh, I believe they count as raw or pre-packed, so only one off your hunger instead of two. Okay. Let's see if carrot soup is a thing in this game and not just Fallout seventy six. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's another thing is that actually if you look in your compendium under consumables. Oh, yeah. There should now be every consumable that's in the game. And it does not appear that carrot soup is a thing, unfortunately. Okay. But we can make it a thing, maybe. We might. I have idea. Maybe I will, in desperate times, try that to make it a cooked food instead of a Actually, raw you know what occurs to me? It's probably, yeah, it's uh, vegetable soup. That's what you're looking for. Dang, no turtle soup, though, huh? I guess they yeah. don't exist. <laughs> uh, looks like, okay, so I am getting one thing. Mukies, if you could be a little bit more up, and that okay. would be good. Hello. Right. There we go. That's much better. All right. So are you all ready to resume where we left off? Yeah, baby. Yep. I believe so. <laughs> all right. So we all know that war never changes, but sometimes it does. Where we last left off with our group of wastelanders, they were investigating a destroyed or derailed train that was delivering much needed food supplies to the Commonwealth and more specifically to Diamond City. The players journeyed towards where the derailment happened and found themselves dealing with a bunch of scavengers as well as an enigmatic individual who may have been related to the children of Adam, the last son of Adam. You're not really sure. He had a lot of things to say, but he also was very 
uh, close to the vest, as it were. What matters, though, is that you now know where the missing food is and who actually hit the train. It wasn't the scavengers that you found at the site. Apparently, it's the raiders that are in a bunker in the distance that you can just barely make out over the snowy hills. And we're going to resume right where we left off. Uh, Brother Landon, the one that uh, was in the car, sort of locked up. You let him free. He's walked off into the wasteland. At this point, I would say that it's starting to get a little bit dim outside. It's not quite exactly dusk, but maybe another hour or two before the sun will be down at this point. Um, you have a direction of where to go. Again, you can see the bunker in the distance. And from here, the floor is now open to the players. So should we carry the stuff now that's left over or should we come back after we check out this bunker how much is it weigh? I think uh, I could probably carry it yeah. Mark how much is uh, I guess DM how much is how, roughly weight wise how much is left in the uh, train to carry so in the train that's left over, there are two crates that I'm going to set at 25 pounds. Each, okay. I should say. So 50 total. I can happily take them for now. Okay. Yeah. We're and just loading course, big old crates into our backpacks. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're going to operate on hammer space rules to a certain degree, but just don't pull out like random big old power armor out of nowhere. That I might want to <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Okay, I will make a temporary item in miscellaneous called crate. Mm -hmm. Um, can I judge roughly how far of travel that bunker is from us? Well, that's the thing. Right now, the wind and the snow isn't that hard. It's kind of just loose powder. So, if you wanted to charge over there, it would maybe take twenty minutes. If you wanted to be a little bit more careful, it'd be more like 40 minutes. It's still not that bad. And it's not late enough that if we felt like it took 40 minutes, we would start being approaching tiredness, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. I believe that we should head over there as soon as we can. If there's more supplies, we wouldn't want them eating more. I, I agree, Hugh. I think we should start that start heading that direction yeah i mean and you know i can kind of scope out since i know raiders well you know we kind of see i know the ins and outs and how they behave and what they're looking for so hopefully we can kind of sneak our way up that isn't a bad idea maybe once we get into earshot we start going a little slower and trying to see what's there before we jump into it Sounds good. You do not hide Adam's glow under a bushel. <laughs> Ever present. Yes. We're not but hiding I will be from standing Adam's behind glow. Kate. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we make our way. Shall I? Do I have to um, do roll? A roll? Yep. Endurance? Yeah, okay. It is actually going to be a perception and a survival here to note, see if you notice oh. anything as you approach the bunker itself. I can make the roll for us then. Go for it. Remember, okay. you can uh, assist one another, and the okay. difficulty, difficulty is going to be a one, and you have six AP at the moment. Okay. Uh, just so we can spend the AP, I'm going to use one. Okay. Cool. And oh, then... uh, I cheated before. I oh, realized yeah, that uh, rad resistance was higher than my endurance. I wrote it down wrong. So I have inspirational instead. So we have uh, max of seven. Nice. Eight. Heretic, heretic. <laughs> <laughs> so I am doing a survival. Doing and perception. As perception mm -hmm. as six. What do your special eyes see? Look, um, look with your special <laughs> eyes. I'm Mark. just trying to think. How I'm confident with a nine. That's a fifty chance on each die. Yeah. Look at that. Woo. Game before a double complication. <laughs> it's always possible. But we gained hey, one AP. We back. saw that. You, yeah. Alright. So you get two successes, yeah. you get back up to six AP. And yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, with the snow starting to come down a little bit heavier than usual, um, you're starting to have to trudge a little bit harder with your feet. 
But as you get close to the bunker, before you trip anything, you do notice that there is a single sentry turret that is connected to a control terminal next to a large bunker door that is kind of basically just a barn door for all intents and purposes that leads into the small concrete bunker. If you guys want, I think I could take care of the turret with no one noticing. Sneaking up, huh? I'm always happy to try. Yeah, I can also I, try sneaking as well. I have no qualms with this. The this, technology I leave to you. Yeah, I, I... Assuming it's just a simple group of raiders, I could probably get into that computer. Words hurt, you know. A simple group of raiders? <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, how, how well do you program your turrets at your base? Turrets? Uh, okay. Well, we didn't have turrets. Oh, you know what? Never mind then. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like to attempt to stealth up to the computer. All right. That is going to be an agility and a sneak. Originally, it was a difficulty of one. However, I am going to spend some AP of my own to activate the effect mm. of heavy snowfall, meaning that your difficulty is now going to be a two. And now this trait that I've added to the scene, that affects everyone moving about in the snow. So just keep in mind that everybody's difficulty has gone up by one. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to spend a luck point to use my luck as my base instead. Okay. So now I'm rolling a nine plus sneak. And then I will use an AP to roll three dice and roll. Ooh, not bad. That is three successes, so you do get one back. So you are able to get up right to the terminal. And I was almost debating because on the Fallout community server, somebody's actually figured out how to do the terminal minigame. Um, <gasps> if you guys want, I can figure that out for next time, maybe. But for I'm, the time being, we're just going to handle it via a roll. Um, this would, would be takes, an yeah. int and a science at a difficulty of two. Int and science of two. That's all, Professor Clayman. Right I'm going to spend oh, yeah. one AP again. Roll three. So that is eight plus three, and it's tagged. Four oh. successes. That is significant. So not only are you able to gain master control of this turret, but you essentially can reprogram it to do whatever <laughs> you want it to do. Hmm made some happy beeping noises <laughs> you're in <laughs> i guess i would reprogram it in a way where none of us would be a target mm -hmm. and i'm just wondering if i just want to turn it off in general though i can go back to it later if that's the case We could always take it with us later. That is true. That is true. I'm just thinking how many, how much components I could take off the thing if I scrapped it. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's I will come back to it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I will just reprogram it so that none of us three are targets. I would also like to decrease its level of, uh, like wildlife threats. Keep it okay. towards. Keep it aimed towards humans, just not us. Okay. And with that much, uh, that many successes, you do indeed make it so that when you come up, the rest of you, uh, Raging Kate and Brother Hugh, when you approach the bunker, you do not set off any alarms or trigger the turret in any way. Nice. And I did have a question. Yes. Uh, did so? What was the challenge? It was a one or a two? It was a two. Okay. Uh, just a heads up. I can't go past nine. I mean, six AP on the party side. Let me double check. Try now. Um, even though it would not been. Oh, yes, I can now go to seven. Perfect. I have moved it back to six, though. Thank you. You're welcome. You may continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good job, Professor. Uh, yeah, computers are, are good, man. They, they do some <laughs> things. Uh, just a heads up. I did. I say quietly. I did program it in a way where, let's say, those guys came outside, the turret would shoot at them. Oh, okay. 
So kind of lure them around, knowing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's snowing heavy outside, so they probably can't hear us too well. But that also means I probably can't hear what's going on inside. I attempt to try to hear what's going on inside. You hear the wind in the snow. <laughs> hmm. Plus, the door is closed at the moment, so that you know that, that helps too. <laughs> um, All right, should we? If you'd like, there, Professor, uh... I could go through the front door for you. <laughs> I, I'm not great at going through doors. When I know there's people behind it that will shoot at me. Um. So yes, do we want to pull them, draw them out, or do we want to go in? You can always know. insult them, and then that'll get them running. That is true. Um, now nah, let's let's go inside. If just keep in mind where the door is, in worst case, we'll run outside and uh, try to get the advantage that way. Makes sense. Hugh, would right. you, you said you'd like to go first, or Kate? Would you like to take this one? I mean, I could go. I ha I think I have a good enough health. Kate's ready uh, to get see some action here. I trust Kate's judgment when it comes to these matters. Yeah, there's really nothing complicated about it when it comes to raiders. <laughs> I open the door and gesture for Kate to head in. I curtsy and say, thank you, and I head in. So the interior of the bunker is actually very small. Uh, there's maybe enough room in here for a campfire, some sleeping bags, a little bit of uh, crate storage. In fact, speaking of crate storage, you see that pretty much everything in here has been stacked to the ceiling. Uh, with crates taken from the train. They bear the same marks, the same sort of signature on the boxes. Overall, there are 10 boxes that you're seeing, and you see also four raiders around the campfire with their backs to you, and they seem to be arguing over something. And I'll give you a little bit of a snippet of their conversation. It's something like, no, man, I, I, I want the vegetable soup because it's great. You know, it's good for the constitution. Man, what do you know about it? It's fucking vegetable soup. What, why, why, why are you going to be cramping my style? Dude, it's vegetable soup. I, I can just get a carrot and make you a new one. You, you don't know that. Silt, Silt, tell him he's a fucking moron. And uh, one of them, Silt, kind of slaps them both upside the head and goes, Shut up! I'm trying to divvy out our loot here fairly. You're distracting me. And then the Mer Mo Curly and Joe routine continues until you do something. <laughs> Ooh, is there a way I can uh, kind of peek my head back out and let them know the situation? Yeah. Without, <laughs> without uh, yeah, okay, so Kate peeks her head back out and is very quietly, guys, they're arguing over soup. Should Tough. we get the ambush or should we try to suggest some other delicious meal? That fool didn't realize he needed a tomato to make a vegetable soup with his carrot, so I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's all lost. I'm not one for violence, but I don't mm -hmm. know how willingly they would be to give us all these supplies back for Diamond City. Hmm. Well, there's three of them there. Is that correct? Three. Yep, there's three. All right, and there's three of us. So I think the best bet with these raiders is perhaps we just kind of like, ta-da, like just appear where the numbers are even, and then we kind of get the gump on jump on them, maybe like have our weapons at the ready. Well, not you, Professor, since you don't have any weapons. They don't have but... <laughs> anything on me. Yes, that is true. Yes. Brother Hugh and I will be at the ready at the other side, and we could just kind of surprise them that way. We should always try for the peaceful route. Yes, we can start peaceful, but be ready for, I mean, raiders are, they got the itchy trigger finger and they're all paranoid. And it's kind of unpredictable. We could go the route of you two walk up. They think they have the advantage. Uh, Hugh does some talking, see if we can get all the stuff back. Maybe Diamond City could use some more uh, caravan people since they lost a majority in this train crash. And if that doesn't work out uh, after you guys get <laughs> hit, maybe I come in and patch your wounds yeah. while they're still trying to, while you're still beating each other up. It sounds like a plan. I like that plan, but we could do a slightly different one. Adam's embrace comes from both sides in the front, 
perhaps I could step forward, getting their attention. And while they're paying attention to me, uh, Regent Kate and the professor, you could take either side, hiding behind the crates. And once they determine me a threat or they become amicable, we can go from there. Sure. They would think they have the three and three on one advantage. They, if they do yeah. have hostile intentions, they would take them. But if mm-hmm. they don't, they would happily listen to you out. I like this plan better. Yeah. All right. Yes. So, so we can kind of sneak in behind some crates. Would that be another sneak attempt? Or yeah, Kate it would indeed. And yeah. I would okay. try to sneak <laughs> okay. uh, into position. And again, okay. thanks to the uh, snow effect that I triggered earlier, it is a difficulty two agility and sneak test for the two of you. Uh, Brother Hugh, you don't need to make this unless you are trying to be stealthy. Okay. Oh, is it yet. for each of us or for I each lead? of you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I will roll. This is tagged. My um, sneak. So let's see. <laughs> like <Okay>. that helped. <laughs> So, oh, uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to um, you gonna re-roll use this? A luck, one of my uh, very few luck points for this. I'm going to get a nat one. <laughs> so do I get to re-roll both or is just one? Per, one per point. One, one per, per point. one, okay. yeah. Okay. I'm going to re-roll to 17 here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you, it's still a difficulty two, so you still have the one. Would you like I, me to roll an attempt to see if I can cover up this mistake or just roll for myself? Um, roll for yourself. Well, can, okay. can brother roll Hugh an assist. assist? Yeah, okay. roll an assist. And roll an assist depending on what her. you roll, I'll maybe or maybe not require another roll. I will be very kind to her and do the <laughs> luck point to use my <laughs> luck. Well, thank you, because I'm this. down to two. So. And if anyone is wondering, I have a luck skill of nine. My character is very lucky. <laughs> so assist yeah. is one. Turn that to nine. No tag. Roll. 18, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, all right. So uh, we'll handle this in the narrative. So Brother Hugh, feel free to walk up, and then I'll interject with the other two in a moment. Uh, Brother Hugh just steps out and raises his arms and says... Greetings, I am Brother Hugh of the Children of Adam, and Adam has brought me here to speak with all of you. And at this, like, all three of them jump and immediately their hands go for their weapons, and you soon have basically uh, three pipe guns being pointed at you. Like, not in your face, but they are pointed definitely at you. And uh, Silt, as you will know him in a moment, kind of goes... How the hell did you find this place? Who who are you? Well, as I said, I am Brother Hugh, and how I found this was through Adam's will. Through Adam's will? Oh, you're one of them crazy last son of Adam types, aren't you? I've only just recently heard of that sect, but I do worship Adam, yes. Hmm. See, I'm telling you, you know, he's uh, he's one of them cookie types, so we should just waste him, boss. No, 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 man, no, man. Maybe he knows how to make a good vegetable shoot. Slap, slap, shut up! So, what do you want here, exactly? To preach? Um, Brother Hugh will then say, I noticed that you have lots of supplies in this area. This was headed towards Diamond City, if I believe. Maybe. Well, Adam has brought me to Diamond City and in turn has guided me towards their supplies. I would like to take them back, but I understand that uh, your type don't like that. Yeah, we lost a lot of people getting these supplies. And even with all this and emotions around at the stacks of crates, even with all this, I'm kind of worried that we're going to make it through the winter. Well, how would you feel if you were to join Diamond City? See, that's going to be a hard part, Silt says, as he starts to stand and not aim his weapon, but he's definitely getting to a better vantage point. 
See, that's the thing. I got uh, exiled by the mayor, and I think he's kind of a prick. So I don't think that's going to be an option. At this, uh, Hugh will slowly put on his power fist and say, <laughs> It is unfortunate that you have made this choice, but the fist of Adam will strike you true. Uh, this is the best. The <laughs> notice of him putting his gauntlet on, I would like to spend a luck point for Mysterious Stranger. Okay. Uh, there's three of them. They're all at optimum range for Mysterious Stranger. Do you want to hit uh, Silt or one of the other two? Uh, I think it'd be funnier if uh, the three Stooges saw their boss get hit. So it's going to be Silt. It's going to be, be Silt. Okay. All right. Well, uh, go ahead and roll Mysterious Stranger, remembering that he rolls 3d20 by default. Okay. <laughs> That's an NPC's Mysterious Stranger. I am going to roll for this. I'm going to roll with three. I'm going to roll. That's three successes, and you hit them in the head, so roll me damage here. This could be very oh, deadly man. very quickly. <laughs> roll eight combat dice. Okay. Uh, well, you only got six with uh, mm, piercing sad. one, vicious one, so that's actually seven damage. Do you wish to spend one of your luck to re-roll some of the Mysterious Strangers? I will do that, because I still have two luck left. I now have one luck left after doing this. One, two, three. Re-roll. Okay. So, uh, you know, you're, you're coming up with Kate, you know, you both trip over something. And when you look up, professor, as you pick yourself off the ground, you see someone you've seen a lot in your life, the strange man in a trench coat and a bowler hat. And he just very quietly steps out behind the three individuals. And let me make it clear. There's nowhere this guy could have stepped from. Like he just appears from the ether and he puts his 44 against the back of Silt's head pulls the trigger, and chunky salsa happens. Ooh. Just chunky salsa everywhere. At this, the other two raiders immediately start freaking out. They're covered in viscera, and they're they're starting to freak out. Like, what the hell? And uh, we are now in initiative order. So, normally, the players go first here, but since you did just activate Mysterious Stranger, and you did fail your stealth roll, I'm going to let it be one of the raiders' turns. And the raiders... I think as they look at themselves and like try to wipe off some of the gore, they look at you, Brother Hugh, and go, The hell what kind of crazy shit are you on, man? I told you it was Adam's will. Well, <laughs> let's see if Adam wills this. And uh, they are going <laughs> to attempt to pump some pipe gun at you. All right. Understandable. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is your defense? Defense one. All right, then that does hit. Let me roll damage here. Probably not going to do a whole lot, but you are going to take uh, four uh, damage. That's a lot. Ugh. And if it matters to your right. But uh, that's one raider. Uh, we now go back to the players. I have ten, so I don't think I go first. My initiative is... I guess I should probably say that I usually run the variant rule of player, enemy, player, enemy. But if you guys want to okay. use straight initiative, we can. Uh, I mean, I'm used to the normal. Robot. Okay. Uh, my initiative is 12. Oh, then you definitely go before the next raider, for sure. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. And, uh, yeah, I thought um, Kate's going to kind of look motion and look at her bat and just say, it's go time. And she's going to kind of tighten her grip and get ready to attack with her spike baseball bat, which I would like to say I do have the perk for that. I have, um, let's see, I believe it's, yeah, big leaks. Mm -hmm. So all two-handed melee weapons gain vicious, which I have nice. applied to it. Yes. And then I also get plus two combat dice for my strength modifier. Okay. I think it automatically calculates that in the sheet, but we'll find out when you roll. Yes. Well, that's the damage. You still have to roll the hit. <laughs> oh, was, I'm so sorry. I keep doing this. You're good. You're good. We're all learning all right, the good. system. I get a second chance here. <laughs> okay. So all I think right. if you just click the uh, the weapon name itself, it should roll. Oh, just the actual weapon name. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes it much easier. Tag Two here. successes. You actually get an AP back for your trouble. 
I got that. Nice. And it looks like you are getting him in the legs, so go ahead and I'll let you re-roll the damage completely. Okay. Um, is that one floating AP that I'm seeing here? Nope, it's should seven. be at seven. Yeah, yeah we're seven. at seven. Oh, okay. You're still welcome to use AP. We have plenty. Hit this guy hard. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I will spend one AP to add a dice. So for that, I would click on... How would I apply the... Oh, I just do it manually. Okay. Yeah, you'd I'm have sorry. to do it manually if you're uh, <laughs> if you're adding something to it. Okay, I'm going to spend an AP to add a damage dice. Oh my lord! Oh my <laughs> lord! All right, somebody, <laughs> somebody screenshot that because that's probably going to be the roll to beat for the rest of the game. Just fifteen four effects. <laughs> Guts everywhere, I hope. Oh, no, no. It's even worse than that. <laughs> so you splattered. come in and like a golf club almost, you sweep this guy off his 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 feet so hard that his <laughs> leg goes with the baseball bat and it goes <gasps> flailing and hits one of the crates. And on the way down, the guy's just like, oh, I guess I don't have a lick to stand on anymore. And then, uh, yeah, he expires pretty yeah. quickly because that's a lot of blood. And that's a lot nice. of... That's just a lot of chunky salsa. <laughs> and at this, the, uh, aside. <laughs> at this, the other raider just kind of throws up his hands and sort of like, Look, man, look, I, I, uh, I, look, you know, just don't... Whatever you do, the gun shit and the, the baseball... Cr sh sh I don't, don't... But it is you Brother sure? Hugh's turn. Oh, uh, I thought it was going to be the other raider. Well, if you... But if it's not... Yeah, if you want to hit the raider, I mean, he's surrendering, quote-unquote. <laughs> he just got um, your fist ready. He has made his choice <laughs> to Adam. <laughs> I, I'll say, drop your weapon. He drops his pipe gun. <laughs> and then You're he drops his tire us. iron, too. Oh, <laughs> You're going to help us bring these supplies back to Diamond City. Okay. That it? It's either that or I take your life. It, is, is that it? Like, all I have to For do now. is help you haul this shit and, and then I'm free to go? As far Think as I'm concerned, it. yes. Okay. I mean, I kind of like that deal. Hey, how'd you get past the turret, by the way? Ooh, thanks for reminding me. I pop out of a, a bath behind a crate. Uh, that turret will <laughs> definitely shoot at you when you walk outside. Let me fix that before you do. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the real moral question. I want to not fix that. Okay. But <laughs> the brother, the followers have taught me that you need to be nice to people until they at least betray you. And he he's, hasn't betrayed us, so I will go just completely turn the turret off. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, uh, it's a good thing he's wearing his brown pants because he actually motions the door and goes, can I, you know, outside pants situation? Uh, I, I walk in trying to carry the turret in my hands. Yeah, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to play with this for a minute. Okay, he uh, very awkwardly shuffles uh, around you. Leave the door open, too. Needs to air out. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, he very awkwardly shuffles around you all and deals with his situation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a good first hit for my bat here. Thank you for thank you very much for uh fixing that up for me. Yeah, I I think what we should do is just get you a second bat with blades on it too though. <laughs> just so you have options. You never know when this one might break. That's true probably hit something way too hard and do way too much damage and then I'll do damage to my bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I While I was talking to her, I am slowly d d tearing apart this turret. Okay. Right. So you, do you do want to salvage it then? I do, yes. Okay. Then, let me find that stat block real quick. Uh, I need you to roll me in intelligence and science test at a difficulty of one. I trust in my skills, so I'm not going to buy anything with AP. Famous last words, of course. All right, now you still get your <laughs> one. 
All right. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. I need to roll. I'll let you roll. Roll me 3d20 and just do that manually. 3d20. So yeah, not related to any here, skill. This is just how many uh, rounds you're going to get off this thing. Roll. Like that? Does that work for you? Uh, I mean, I can just add it manually, yeah. Uh, let's see. So that's 19 plus 18. So that's, what, 37, I believe? So Sounds that would right. be, yeah, because that's uh, 20 plus 17. Yeah. Yes. So 37. So you get 37 5.56 millimeter rounds. So let me uh, teach you how to do that in the compendium real quick. So in the compendium, in the right-hand menu, underneath the ammunition, the fallout ammunition tab, um, you should see in the listing uh, 5.56 millimeter. Just drag that onto your sheet and set it to be 37. But this is also a good opportunity for me to tell you that you also get two challenge dice wor or combat die worth of uncommon materials. So please go ahead and roll that and we'll see if you get any uncommon materials as well. All right, you get one uncommon material. Cool. While the professor is doing this, Brother Hugh's going to keep an eye on the raider. Okay. He, uh, it's a good thing there's a lot of white snow around. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should go out there too, so with my bat, so he doesn't get any uh, gonna get any funny ideas in his head. Yeah. Right. Um, after he's done taking care of his situation, uh, I think that we should start loading up and making the trek back. Is there anything else? I want to look around, and make sure there isn't anything else in this. Waiting for someone to say the magic words. All right, well, here's your scavenging <laughs> roll, which if I remember correctly, it's gonna be a perception and a survival here to see what you find. Okay, Let's see, perception plus survival. One sec, survival, three, perception, five. So my, okay. Survey says, all right, you get the one success nice. you needed. May I aid her? Uh, you can, but I would tell you it doesn't really get you anything more unless you're shooting for 7 AP again. Oh, then no, I'm good then. Okay. <laughs> so, Knowing our luck, it'll be a complication instead. Yeah, you know, don't want to tempt fate. <laughs> all right, so we're going to test out a new feature of Foundry that I discovered over the week. I'm giving you all access under the Journals tab to the Bunker Item Pile. And if you look at that, that is what you are going to find in the bunker itself. And you should be able to drag things from that sheet onto your own. Okay. But for the people at home who can't see Foundry, uh, they have found 43 5 millimeter bullets. They have 15 flamer fuel, uh, one dirty water, two javelins, and one pipe bolt action. Um. Also 29 caps if you're a cap type. I'll take the caps in the dirty water. I may have uses for this flamer fuel. Yeah, go for it. Um, I'll take the five millimeter in case we come across a. Is that a minigun? I believe. <laughs> Potentially, yes. Also, good. Yeah, uh, five millimeter would be the minigun. I have no use for this javelin. Would anyone like to have that? Um, I'll take it just in case. I'm not. I don't have good throwing skill, but. <laughs> then anyone want this pipe bolt action, or I am going to turn it to scrap. Oh, um, one sec. Let me ch let me check that out. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can um scrap my pipe gun. Just yes. I uh, remove that pipe gun, and then I can't remember if I need a table for scrapping weapons. I think you do. Don't quote me on that, but I think you do. So that will just sit in my inventory until after. Okay. Let me trade with you. Oh, I'm interesting. Going... So I actually can't, uh, or maybe I can if I hit distribute. There we go. I just have to distribute it. All right. We're learning foundry. We're learning. Yeah, we, someone added a lot of fun new things. Yep. Except trade request. Oh, I already took it. Oh, I just okay. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. 
again, we're learning Foundry. There's a lot of cool things, and for people at home who are wondering how we're doing all this, um, I am using the Monks Enhanced Journal module in Foundry. Not only does it give you access to shops, but it also gives you access to item piles. And all I'm going to be doing pretty much is pre-generating a bunch of items that they'll find. And they can do all of the transferring and who's carrying what on their own. Definitely would recommend this for a Fallout game. It is a it very, is. very nice module. It is beautiful, too. Like, it's not just numbers in front of you. Like, it makes sense. It's, mm -hmm. it's UI alone is worth looking into it. Yeah. And it's got all the cute little icons, too. Mm hmm now, after that cute little advertisement, <laughs> what would we like to do next? Well, what I would tell uh, you real quick is that in the time it's taken you to scavenge and all that, um, at this point, the night has truly fallen. The winter blizzard has gotten worse. And it is at the point where you either need to get going to find a campsite out in the wasteland, or you need to bunker down in this... Uh, Salsa bunker, as it were. <laughs> um, it's just decoration. <laughs> I'm cool. We can definitely hide out here. How is everyone on food? And be honest, I turn and look at the raider. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, we kind of got boxes full of food. Uh, maybe that's too obvious. No, no, I, I'm more asking how hungry are you and be, uh, be honest about it. Oh. Uh. I, I mean, it's been like half a day since I've eaten. Kind of okay, hungry. So, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we should feed your mouth, too. <laughs> that's that's nice of you. I'm sure that will go miles towards curing the PTSD I'm going to have from seeing a leg get taken off and my boss's head just melon. Yeah, uh, just a thing so you know. He's not actually part of our group. He just magically shows up when everyone when anyone tries to shoot at me so do keep that in mind oh that was the guy that was the guy i was referencing yeah yeah oh. you missed him when the last raider group attacked us he 100 just makes no sense he he'll literally walk out of a room that there's no entrance but the one he walked out of and blow a guy's head off and walk away and the second he's out of eyesight gone like literally in seconds yeah that was really quick I mean, you're not kidding when you were talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's like I said, I've seen him since I was five. I do not understand it. Uh, he is a guardian angel of Adam. <laughs> yes. How, but this this guy was interested in some vegetable soup. So how many carrots do you got on you? I have four carrots. Uh, I try to see if I can find four tomatoes in the... Uh, food pile, food rations. In the food rations, yeah. You can find some uh, tomatoes very easily enough. And I would say that four tomatoes isn't going to make a dent in the crates, so just keep that in mind. Perfect. Oh yeah, I don't want... I I want enough for us to survive and to get there. I don't want to be rude with this. Fair. But it has been a long day. Uh, if you guys give me about two, three hours, I can... Probably cook us all up some vegetable stew for tonight. Yeah, that sounds delicious. And after seeing all this chunky salsa meat, you know, it makes me a little hungrier. <laughs> Raider this looks at you like, listen, sister, I, are you all right? I mean, are you one of those kind of raiders? Yeah, did, did your group eat people? You told me about the no. drugs, but do they eat people? No, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Oh, okay. You just like salsa. Yeah, I love salsa. Uh, okay. I love fighting. Yeah. <laughs> this was a good time. I hope you had fun. I'm quite concerned for you, Kate. <laughs> ah, I, you'll get used to it. Just like my old group. I will uh, examine their uh, fire pit. Is it will it suit? Uh, is it suitable for a cooking station? Yeah, so now's where we need to talk about campfire or campsite rules. So, oh, okay. Again, I wasn't sure how prepped this was already. Yeah, so what I'm going to say is that I will deduct... Uh, you know what? I'll make a roll of it. This is how many uncommon will not be required. All right, so you uh, already have one uncommon spent on the site that does not come out of your stores. Hey. Um, 
will this count as a suitable location? Or will I have to spend a AP for that? I'd say it's suitable location works out here. Okay, so decrease our difficulty by one as well. Uh, same plan as last time. Comfortable bedding, uh, shelter, and cooking station. Yeah. Does that work for everyone here? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. In that so. case, that is a difficulty two, perception and survival, and make sure that you are spending the common, four common, and one uncommon. Let's mark the stuff off first. Uh-huh. Books, survivor rules, level three. Uh, so only one uncommon. Mm-hmm. And then... And what I'll say is that the part of the setting up the campsite is you get rid of the chunky sauce unless you really, really want to keep it for whatever reason. No, I can haul it out. And I'm picking <laughs> out the bits of flesh from my baseball bat as well. Mm. So I will spend the AP so I can roll three dice. Okay. And then he said, what was my two rolls? Uh, perception and survival. Perception. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was intelligence. Survey the question says... is, do you really... Oh, sorry, I'm looking at my stats. I'm deciding, do I spend the luck point now or spend the luck point to reroll something? <laughs> you that got a lot, option. so... Um, I, I, I want to show this guy kindness. I want to spend the luck point now puts me at zero until I look at something. Um, then I'll go with survival using luck. Rolling three dice. Change that to nine. Roll. Three successes, meaning that you get one back for your troubles. Yeah. So, and someone did redeem Wild Wasteland, and for those who don't know, uh, Wild Wasteland does happen when they make campsites. So, you set up your comfortable bedding, you clean the site, you got a campfire going, you're settling in, and uh, I'll just say as part of this process, you have cooked some vegetable soup, one for everybody. And uh, the raider is just very slowly uh, just taking sips. Like he's like, he's waiting for the shoe to drop and for you to just kill him. Like he can hardly <laughs> believe that he's here. Um, but I need to know who has the highest perception here. I'm going to guess me at six. Yes, probably. I have five. Hughes is so. only four. Professor. You hear mariachi music in the distance, as if it's coming from somewhere outside. Oh, my people. <laughs> Question is, do I... Wait, is it still heavily snowing outside? Oh, yeah. That just shows how loud they are, because mariachi bands are loud. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to play in a couple before. <laughs> and they heard about our salsa. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Now the question is, do I tell the group or do I just let it go? We're having a nice time here. It would be nicer with music, though. <laughs> I, but what if they have to feed the mouths? I can figure it out. Uh, I turn to the party. Guys, I don't want to disturb you, but anyone plan for a mariachi band? A what now? Oh, it's a band that plays a style of music uh, normally a few horns, a guitar uh, bass isn't always included, sometimes there is one, there's also normally a singer as well I, I, I'm a visual person, I think I'm going to have to just take a look uh, the door is closed and it's. I can hear the snow but I can hear them over the snow so they can't be too far away, we can probably just see them from the outside yeah, I want to take a peek here okay uh, Rage and Kate, give me a perception and survival. Perception and survival gets a lot of weight in this system, I'll be fair. It, it really is a power stat. <laughs> oh, All difficulty. Right. Uh, difficulty of two. Okay, let's see here. Oh, would like to spend the AP. Mm. We have enough. Yes. We have enough. Let me do that. If someone wants, I'll put it down. All right, I will spend one AP to add another dice. One success. It was difficulty two, right? Yeah. So you have the option of rerolling with luck, or I'll let you succeed with a complication. 
or we could aid you. Yeah, would anyone? Is that possible? In this I'll let instance? Brother Hugh aid you, but not Professor Clayman. That's fair. I will do an aid then. Give me Adam's helping hand. <laughs> to have a good time. We could just leave it as we don't see them and you guys all think I'm crazy. Also an option. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. So yeah. do we want the complication? Is it too late for me to re-roll uh, with the luck? Nope, you can go ahead. Is, okay, yeah. I really, this is this is entertaining. <laughs> I'm going to spend, my, I have one more luck point left after this. Note to all the GMs out there, all you need to get your players to spend their luck, mariachi band. That's all you need. <laughs> hey, Got two it. successes. Two successes. All right, so it's actually kind of comical because Rage and Kate and Brother Hugh, you go to the door, you open it up, and literally right outside the door, <laughs> <laughs> is a mariachi band and there's four of them they're all ghouls they're in the classical garb of mariachi oh. so the black with the whites and the reds um two of them on are, are on horns one of them is on what looks to be a violin and the other one is just kind of singing and having a good time but they all go dead quiet as you look at them and they look at you no keep going keep going this is my. Uh, this is me trying to bait you to sing. <laughs> no, you're never gonna get me singing as the GM. But uh, they do look at one another, and the singer kind of does like a twirling motion with his hand, a motion to get the instruments going, and they begin playing jubilantly, and everybody within the area can now hear mariachi music. This is amazing. this is the strangest hymn I've ever heard. <laughs> Well, it, it's easier to, to tell when one stops and one begins because of the dun-dun sound after every song. Dun-dun. <laughs> oh, man, this is the best day ever. Got to try out my new bat. Now we have some entertainment. We got a nice warm fire. I want to take a look at what this uh, raider, what the expression on his face is. Um, gobsmacked and utterly out of his element. <laughs> as expected but uh he actually does speak up and he goes i can't believe it it's it's a legendary four maracas oh you know these people yeah i thought they were a myth i it, you are the legendary four maracas knight right uh yeah yeah that's uh that's that's us yeah i don't see four maracas well, it's kind of a metaphor you know we're a, i'm a maraca he's a maraca she's a maraca ah. <laughs> Okay. We're all maracas. See, she gets it. <laughs> mm, makes sense. But, uh, yeah, um, if you haven't noticed, it's coming down pretty hard out here, and you were the only shelter we found in the area, so mind if we come inside and chill with you guys for the night? I'm, I'm more than happy to let you guys in. Also, you guys were playing all the way over here? Well, yeah, I mean, it's what we do. We travel the wasteland, bringing <laughs> joy and music. We don't have a whole lot. We're ghouls. We only have so much joy in our lives. You think Diamond City would hire you guys if we brought you back? Uh, maybe. I mean, we've tried getting with the mayor before, but he wouldn't see us. In fact, they wouldn't even let us through the door. They said we were tacky. <laughs> well, you might have better chances if you stay with us. See, inside here, we've got a lot of stuff that Diamond City wants back. I think they See just sort guys. of stare and nod, like not sure how to respond to that. Oh, no, we were guys... hired to find it. We didn't steal it. No. Oh, well, I guess that makes it a little <laughs> bit easier then. Oh, yeah. I, it's probably because he's looking at me as a raider. And... I just keep yelling from down by the fire, eating my vegetable soup. But uh, Please actually, join us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick, though, looking at you, Brother Hugh. Are you uh, are you with them last son of Adam types, or you you just because you got kind of that look to you? Describe their look. Well, uh, they kind of have white robes, and uh, they have the strange symbol that looks kind of like two snakes intertwined. It's real fucking weird, if I'm being honest. But uh, we usually don't run into them unless we're way southwest. I've never across that sect in my travels but I have been down that area well you've been into the glowing sea 
I have, yes. Ah, I mean, that's where we found the first one that uh, accosted us. And let me tell you, they make for horrible campsite mates. Hmm. What did they do to you guys? Oh, nothing. Uh, they were just sprouting and prostatizing. Is that the word, prostatizing? I don't know, boss. Well, we're going to say it is. Uh, basically, we didn't get a lick of sleep. Uh, we'd start to lay down for the evening. We'd start to go to sleep, and then all of a sudden, they'd ring a bell, and it's like, oh, it's time to time to give thanks to Adam. And they did that every hour on the hour. So they didn't harass you. They were just... Noisy as hell. Yeah. Huh. Much like yourselves. Noisy as hell. <laughs> Maybe we should make that... Write that down. Somebody write that down. We're going to make that a song. <laughs> I heard Trombone Shorty has some stuff like that you guys might be interested in then. Trombone Shorty? Yeah, yeah, he's a guy who plays trombone. It's more New Orleans, but you guys, there's, you, you share the same type of instrument, so you might just be able to go find some uses between each other. Ah, I see, I see. Well, uh, and at this point, like, their, you know, their uniforms have started to accumulate snow, so uh, <laughs> can, we, uh, can we come in now? Yes, That's of course, fine. come in. Yeah. <laughs> and lucky for you, this child of Adam carries his glory and of Adam in his heart. I like him already. <laughs> I've been traveling with him for a couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe a year or two now. Uh, he's He has never woken me up in the middle of the night to praise to Adam. I don't know if that's yet. a good thing or not. Yeah, he did just say yet. I think that's kind of menacing. Well, yeah, yeah, sometimes I wake him up to ask him questions about Adam because I'm curious, but it's more me waking him up and not so much him waking me up. Gotcha. Are you staring at him while he sleeps? Writing no. notes? No, oh. I will just wonder something. I, look, That's usually people, me who does the staring. <laughs> it is? He's not wrong. I've gotten used to it. Uh, something you might have to get used to, Kate. Ah. Um, no, I like to document things. Uh, because the people who taught me uh, a lot of the stuff you see me using uh, like to know how to interact with other groups that they might find in the wasteland. And sometimes I will have a burning question that will keep me awake all night long. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so you have to wake him up. Yeah. Sometimes well, I get stuck staying awake crafting things. Sometimes I stay way too awake thinking about questions. Like, it's normal for me. Ah, oh, yes. Sometimes when I sleep, uh, I just end up dreaming of different uh, new weapons. Can we let those guys in, by the way? Sorry to interrupt Yeah, you let you. them in. They, yeah. At this point, they've come inside. Nice. Just want to make sure that we think we yeah. were talking to them still outside. <laughs> no, even just... more snow is on them. <laughs> Frozen. Some more snowmen. We just turn and they're all dead. <laughs> hey! <laughs> free weapons, or free uh, instruments. But real quick, as a point of order, once they are seated around the fire, and it's kind of cramped in here now that there's seven, eight, eight warm bodies in here, so it is kind of close quarters, but it's very homey feel, you know? It's, this is the true wasteland experience, just coming down with people you've just met, one guy that you blew off the head of his boss and has press gained him into service, uh, you've got good food. The mariachi band, the six, the four maracas all have what appear to be uh, those glowing mushrooms that have appeared a few times at this point. So there's they've mm. kind of got just a kind of a salad made of those glowing mushrooms. Um, but as you all settle in and you begin talking and sharing the warmth of the campfire, that's where we're going to go to our five to ten minute break. We'll be back shortly, everybody. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody, to part two of session two of Fallout Frozen Atom, a Fallout 2D20 Winter of Atom actual play. We resume with everybody waking up refreshed, rehydrated, and fed in the morning the following day. And when you all go to open the bunker door to step out into the chilly wasteland, you're greeted with a wall of white, as in the mm. snow has either blown or fallen enough to completely form a wall in front of the door. So it's a good thing that the door goes inward, not outward. 
I don't think Kate would have trouble opening that door if it did. <laughs> no, smash my way through. Yes. Especially if it was made out of raiders, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of salsa. Um, well, we could spend an hour, guys, uh, packing up, dividing this loot, not loot, dividing these crates evenly among all of us, and see not if... Not the raider. Uh, the raider could help us carry, or at least yeah, that's, watch our backs. That's the idea. Okay. He, has to, yeah. he has to earn his repentance. Okay. I will be watching him, though. Because <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just my paranoia, but I don't we, trust raiders generally, being one myself. Oh, so it's past experience. Understandable. Um, <laughs> I say we give him a crate or two. Divide, which would be, you said there's 200 pounds of loot here? Uh, there's 10 yeah. crates, so times 25, there's 250. 250. Um, I can carry 100 and still have a decent amount of room left. Uh, so I have a backpack and I have a pretty high strength score. So I can carry quite a bit as well. I have a 183 pounds I can wear, or hold still. Oh, so we all can easily, between the two of us, between any two of us could carry half of this. Okay. <laughs> Each. But we'll, we'll split it up as evenly as possible so we don't uh, overburden one person. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I guess I'd use this time if uh, to see if, see if maybe the snow melts a little bit during the day. And uh, may I look at my trinket? DM. Sure. So Clayman pulls out this uh, little hollow disc and just stares at it. Stares at it for a while while we're dividing up the crates among everyone. And for those at home who are wondering, why are you staring at a random hollow? What's the purpose of that? <laughs> yes. So uh, one of the things uh, that you can do to regain luck points uh, during a mission is once during said mission, you may look at a trinket. Uh, one of the ones, that, the one I have chosen uh, to have some meaning towards me uh, is a scrambled holodisc. So that this the the idea is the trinket does have some personal meaning to you. So this one does. I actually have a reason why I stare at it every once in a while and ponder it. And that's just what Clayman does while everyone's dividing up the crates. Fair enough. Hey, so what are you steps staring up at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I, uh, I keep telling you that uh, you need to put that in something in order to hear what it's saying. I, I know what's on it. I just don't know if I made the right choice. And he puts it away. That sounds ominous. And cryptic. That's my job. Yeah. Sometimes you learn things with science that can better people, but just as likely ruin everything. And I made a choice to Hopefully well, for the good. one of those two. I'm sure oh. you'll find out. That makes me feel so <laughs> much better and at ease. No, I, I think that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know if I made the correct choice to help people or if my choice hurts people. Hmm. Well, well science is much like it. faith. It is not uh, good or evil by itself. It is those who wield it. I've seen those who have the faith in Adam that uh, overstep their bounds. I've also you seen saw? those with weaponry that is far beyond their comprehension hurt others. But I've seen you and your scientific ways bring much peace to the wastelands. You saw what I did in that vault. You would understand it is a harder choice than just in the wrong hands. Whoa, you were in a vault? Yeah. Uh, while I've explored the wastelands, uh, you've sometimes you'll find that a vault in the area was doing some research on plants. And you go, you go investigate it. Hmm. And <laughs> you just moseyed on up and went in? Was there yeah, anyone yeah. in there? No, there was no one alive in the vault. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. Person. 
Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Were there people alive before you went in there? And when you <laughs> came in there, they didn't alive anymore? I may have lost a few other people who were uh, investigating this vault with me, but uh, we didn't. None of the residents in the vault were I can't quite describe. We noticed there was something fishy pretty early on. And then as we were deciding to leave, we we got attacked by what was growing in there. And I even though I managed to get some of the info and I could probably, if I spent the time of learn, fully learned that was in that vault, I don't know if it would have been useful. Is the vault around here? Or? No, no. I, uh, as well, I was spending some more time on the west coast side while I was, uh, while I was working on my, uh, doctorate with, uh, with the followers. Speaking of, don't doctors usually have some sort of certificate, or is yours more of an honorary title? I, I do. I actually keep it back at my tribe. Uh, so I go by professor because people kept thinking that because I was being called Dr. Clayman, it made me a doctor in medicine. Hmm. So to fix that issue and the fact that I do like teaching people, I, I just kind of go by professor now. But I do have an actual full degree in bioengineering. The uh, followers on the West Coast set up an actual full school for people to go freely learn. It's wow. also where, uh, if I ever go back there, you i am taking all the notes on adam you've taught me for them to file away so if we have if anyone who goes there ever stumbles upon your people we will have some understanding of already what you guys are like and how to best interact among with each other well i'd very much like to see that one day yes if we're, if we're ever out there i'll definitely take you but if that's the case We'll probably stop at my house first in, in the Dakotas. It's a nice little farm. We grow a lot of corn. Mm. Corn's delicious. I do love corn. We, we <laughs> use corn for a lot of things there. Not all of it's delicious. Mm. Again, ominous and cryptic. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no. I, we don't need to go deep into my past life, guys. We still, who knows? But maybe. The past life? Is, have you been Wait. reborn? <laughs> I've, no, sorry. I guess it's my current life, but mm. I'm I've, growing more, ever more suspicious and confused. And <laughs> look, I he was the one that's supposed to say things that get us all confused. Just, just know <laughs> that corn can be used for a lot of things, and we don't need to spend the next hour talking about corn. <laughs> I would like to get these supplies back to Diamond City. <laughs> I, however, would love to talk about corn more. <laughs> we can talk about corn on the way there. We could. Uh, maybe after we get back, we can stop at a diner in Diamond City and we can discuss there. Mm. Go for some corn. <laughs> if they have sweet corn there, uh, I will agree. I imagine so. Maybe there's some in these crates, too. We've already kind of used some of the stuff in the crate. Let's not do that unless we're hungry. Yes. We, there are those more in need than us of this food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, we divvied it all up. Uh, wait. Is the the mariachi band coming with us? That's their choice. I turn to them who were probably awkwardly listening to my <laughs> All the entire diving. time because that wall <laughs> of snow hasn't gone anywhere. Hmm. So, uh, I mean... We usually don't do traveling gigs like that, but uh, if you want to pay us, I don't know, what do you think's fair, guys? Ten caps? If you want to pay us ten caps, we'll go with you to your next campsite. Just to the next campsite? But if you don't, make it to Diamond City you don't want time. to go to Diamond City? Well, 
Uh, and you can see they're looking nervously at each other. Uh, are are you guys new to Diamond City? Yeah, yeah. I, yes. I first time. Yeah, that's also my first time. I don't. I I normally avoid the big cities in this area. Well, uh, you you know Mayor Donahue or McDonough? You do you know him? Uh, yes. Briefly. Yeah. So, uh, we discussed. Part of the reason he's a mayor is because he made the campaign promise to throw out all ghouls of Diamond City. So uh, oh. you kind of see how that makes an issue. If we come with you, we're just going to get thrown out by his goons. That, hmm. That seems that's so, very unfortunate. It seems unkind. Well, that's uh, me and the Maracas. We were actually talking about that. You got a lot of food here. You got a lot of supplies. That's a lot of bargaining power. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe you can uh, change the mayor's mind. Yeah, I'm sure maybe. that we could make him make an exception. Yes. In this time of need, uh, yeah, yes, it's important to feed mouths, but it's also important to have enough people to take care of each other. And some extra hands in the city could be useful, even if it's just to bring joy with music. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's kind of where we're thinking. So uh, tell you what, uh, we'll waive the cap charge, and uh, if you put in a good word and get us into the city, we'll just pretend the whole thing never happened. Yeah. That sounds great. Where are you guys going to um, kind of hide out while we, you know, where can we find you guys after we, so we can tell you whether or not things went well with the mayor? You could, so, uh, you could be the front door. Well, yeah, there's kind of the shanty town outside Diamond City, kind of to the left of the entrance. Okay. You okay. know, the place where all the people uh, went after Hugh gave his speech. <laughs> that glorious speech. Yes, many future converts are going to come from that location. If they survive the radiation that you they told will. them to ingest. Um, well, guys, I have an idea about this uh, wall of snow. Well, first, I stick my hand through it to see if it's just blocking the door. If oh, it's, it's actually solid. that high. It is Ooh. solid. Oh. <sighs> I don't want to use this. I'm going to... Uh, shove flamer fuel. Cut, uh. Dig out little holes. Mm -hmm. Put flamer <laughs> fuel in all the different spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, attempt to set them to go off in a short period of time. So I have a very, very important question for you. Do you have explosives as a tag skill? Not as a tag skill. Is this okay. going to be a... With this, with, what I have known this to be... Uh, a difficult thing to do with this? I would say that this, so you know, this would be probably a agility and an explosives. Actually, I could also see intelligence, maybe. Yeah, maybe an intelligence and explosives. Um, the difficulty would be a four, though. Ooh, that is difficult. But you do have also hmm. four AP, so... I do. problem is, though, I don't know how far it is this high as snow. Hmm, because I could just burn us a hole and there would be even more blockage of snow behind it. I guess I could just try and see if it's thin yeah. enough to bash through at that point. But I guess I guess I can see if Kate can just smash it hard enough first before I try my uh Yeah, I could try it out thing. first. Okay. Kate, go ahead and give me a strength and athletics, please. Difficulty of four. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have use to the AP. buy some AP. Yeah, use um, it all. Use as much as you want. So it would be three AP to get two extra. Rolling four dice total. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna spend two. I might need an assist here. But you can probably help out with this one. Uh, yeah, I could. I could assist. Yep. Okay. Strength and athletics so, on your part as well. Strength and athletics. Okay. Let's see here. Ooh. Terrible. Ooh. I'm sorry. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> so that's only going to be... I don't even think you've got enough luck to even... No, so I only you... have one left. No. So I think that's what's going to have to happen then, yeah. is Kate, you step up to bat, literally, and <laughs> Hugh pulls out his uh, fist of Adam and tries to go at the snow alongside you, and you're not making a dent. Like, this is hard <laughs> pat snow. I'm just imagining we're just like ha ah, ah, ha ah, ha trying for a little while. Everyone's just 
Oh, standing. it's even better. The mariachi I, band has started playing. Like yes. as you're going at this, the mariachi band is just going. They're pumping us up, getting us into the groove. But unfortunately, when those fails start groove. hitting it. Yeah. So I have the slow option. I could craft a fire in front of the door and see if it just slowly, over time, melts it. I can keep. I could probably keep it going with the flamer fuel. Uh, we would just not be standing by it when I add the flamer fuel to the fire. Mm-hmm. Or I could try to go more expedient and go with uh, burning it down quickly with the flavor fuel. Hmm. The GM would like you to know that all the time you spend in this bunker, you all have to eat and drink still. I know. Explosions! Explosions! Always explosions. Hey, it would be a 10. It would be my target number. But I only have one die. So I'd have to have assistance, even if I rolled all three successes. Yeah, well, you can also give me AP. Remember, <laughs> that is true. It's true. So I could give you one AP to give me four dice. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I f- be adverse to that. I have one luck point, so I can reroll one thing. This is going to be difficult, guys. Either way, we this is going to be very difficult. <laughs> We're stuck between a rock and a snow place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll as much as I want to keep this flamer fuel for uses, uh I may have to use all of it. If I used all fifteen flamer fuel, does that affect the difficulty at all? I'll lower it to three, but your complication range is gonna become an eighteen to twenty. That's fair because more explosives. Hmm. I'll go with that. Worst case I'm gonna injure myself. Yeah. And if you didn't, if we couldn't get out of here, um, we wouldn't be able to use the flamer fuel anyways, because we'd be dead. That, is, that so. is true. Okay, I've decided. I'm going to go explosives using intelligence. Uh, I'm going to give the GM one AP. Okay. So you put me at three, so I can use all three. The attempt roll four. So explosives using my intelligence of eight. Um, it's not tagged. I'm rolling four dice and I need three successes. Oof. Oof. That is zero that's, successes with a complication. Three, no, that's three complications. You no, you're 18. right, because the 19, 20, and 18. Oh. oh my lord. I might oh, be dead, guys. Oh man. Alright. This well, is the time where I remind the party I have a sti- I have multiple stim packs in my pocket. <laughs> let me uh let me just very quickly look up the flamer damage. Let me I'm going yeah, to you also have an empty pen in there because it turns out you're very allergic to fire. <laughs> <laughs> and I will remove all 15 of this. Uh, so I'm just going to roll this. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this on a sheet real quick and roll it. So let me put it on a mysterious stranger because why not? Oof. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and roll this. Uh, you used all the flamer fuel, so it has, what, a 15. fire rate of four. So it's That's one three die. Shots. Well, it's one die per four, so doing the math in my head. Uh, that's four, four extra? Three extra? Three extra. Okay. So <laughs> I rolled low, which is good. Uh-huh. So, yes. Professor, you set up your flamer fuel detonating wall. You set it off, and then you realize that you are within an enclosed space, and that... Uh, no, I, I knew this was a, a, a chance that this would happen. Yep. <laughs> so, it detonates. You take four damage, uh, and then it affects, so it spreads... So you're also going to take an additional two damage. So you take a grand total of six. Um, It is energy, though, but it's basically all over you. So I think it just hits you anyway. Um, And then there's the issue of spread or not spread of burst here, because burst is the one that affects things in close proximity to you. So here's what I'm going to do. They were away from me, but I don't know. That's the thing. So here's what I'm going to do, um, because I want us to be all on the same page. Uh, I'm going to roll a challenge die, and if I roll an effect, somebody else will be caught in this fiery explosion. 
I have not rolled an effect. It is just the professor that will take this damage. And then I can't remember for injuries. Yes. Um, is... it's, uh, it's only uh, five in a single attack, if I remember correctly, but let's double check. Yes, because I think persist is after. So as in the t- my turn, start of my turn, if I recall. Oh, it's uh, burst as well. Ooh, I'm going to burn again. I need to get myself out as soon as possible. Right. Uh, so the persistence is equal to the number of effect rolls. So it's going to be persistent for three. So you are literally on fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the difficulty to put it out would be a difficulty three. You could set the attribute and the skill. And then in terms of injury, yeah, it's uh, it's only five more damage in one hit. So you're good there. Okay. So I'm not injured, but I did just take six damage. And then I will attempt to put myself out. Okay. How are you going to go about that? Um, what is the best Ooh, way? We got no, chat just Kata. gave you a quantum. There you go. Oh, yes. Thank you, chat. Um, the best way is probably uh, trying to trust fall into this thing of snow behind me and rolling. Okay. So yeah, uh, difficulty of three. I'll give you a. What do I even want to make this? An agility plus survival here. Yeah, I wanted to be intelligence, but I don't know how do I can intelligently put out a fire other than say I'm walking into snow. Oh, how many? <laughs> how many AP is the quantum? Oh, you uh, added three. it just now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, do I use them to try to help me put myself out? Well, if you don't, uh, you're immediately going to take another four, so... That is true. Um, he was going to assist as well. He's going to... Perfect. I'm going to use the luck point. Start slapping the fire. Uh, do I want to use a luck point? Yeah, I'll use a luck point. <laughs> put me at zero. So I can use luck instead. So survival. Uh, my... That's nine... I am going to spend... Do I spend the three? Yeah, I'll spend the three. AP to put me at four. Time to roll. Okay, you got your three. You're good. Okay. And then uh, because I have the trait educated and I'm not a tagged in explosives, you got an AP for me failing. Oh, neat. <laughs> But I think I have put myself out and anything in the immediate area. Does me putting myself out against the snow do literally anything to yeah. this pile? So here's what happens. So again, big explosion. Maybe Professor so loses quick, an eyebrow though, or two. And then... My assist. Oh yeah, go ahead and roll your assist because that could be yeah. AP. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was the skill for it? Uh, um, I would say on yours, probably a agility and a survival. Agility and survival? Okay. Survey set. It's probably not going to be enough. It's just extra. Hey, hey. no, there you go. You it got actually your works. Nice. I will mark the AP for us all. All right. So here's what happens. Uh, professor, you lose an eyebrow, maybe a little bit more, and your uniform or your coat is on fire. And in a singular action, you fall back into the snow wall as Brother Hugh basically uses his uh, power fist to scoop up big things of snow and just slam it against your uh, burning areas. So it's one of those things where if this were a failure, this would be him damaging you. But there's enough care behind Brother Hugh's (laughs) actions that after a few frantic moments of like, oh, God, I'm being punched by a power fist. Oh, God, I'm on fire. You stop being on fire. And as you turn to look behind you, You've actually made a small enough gap or a large enough gap uh, that you could squeeze out of the bunker. But here's the problem. As much as I said we were going to be using hammer space, I'm not going to hammer space the crates. And there's no way the crates are going to fit through that hole. Uh, We need the crates. Is it possible I can try and smash that hole wider again? Maybe yes, but you have to do it from outside. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, will... this is like, oh my gosh, this is like that, um, that like puzzle where you're in a boat going across and you have like a, a coyote <laughs> and like this and a rabbit. Because we have to get the supplies, but we also have to make sure the raider doesn't like double cross us or something. There's no <laughs> other exit. I think we're okay. 
Wait, I turn to the raider. There's no other exit in here, correct? <laughs> uh, is this a bad time to say yes? Oh my gosh. No, no. Any time is a bad time, I feel like. No, no, he's he's letting us know. Uh, do we want to take a look at that door first? Oh, can you show uh, wh us What this was other your door? name, by the way, raider? <laughs> oh, he finally asked my name. That that's a good important step to me not dying. Uh my name uh it's Sam. Alright, Sam. Please lead us to this other door. Well, uh, help me move these crates, I'll show you it right away. Uh we will move the crates out of the way and <laughs> see what he's talking about. So it's one of those things where uh if you move the crates, there's actually a small hallway that comes off of the main little atrium. And there is an actual bathroom there. There's an actual head and a bed that you could have slept in. But uh, the hallway leads to a small spiral staircase that does seem to go up. Uh, wow. Kate, would you like to investigate in case there's dangers that you can hit? I was hoping you would ask. All right. Yeah, I want to go up and investigate. And I'm also... Just a little. <laughs> I'm gonna like shoot a little glare at that raider for not speaking up earlier, as I walk past him. All right. I have to do a roll here. Let's see. That's never a good sign. That's a great uh -huh. sign. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh dear, that is a significant number of successes. So, Rage and Kate, you go up the spiral staircase, taking it slow, making sure you're not ambushed. When all of a sudden. A rad roach drops on your head. Ah, disgusting. Mm -hmm. I just try and swat it off that to make some sort of attack here. Well, that that's what I rolled was its surprise attack on you. Oh. Um, so let me just double check the damage. It's not a whole lot of damage, but it's still one of those disconcerting things. Where it's like, oh, God, rad roach from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> disgusting. Uh, animals and insects, page 339. One of this the perils... One of the perils of uh, doing everything in Foundry is that some of the things aren't in there, so I have to look them up manually every once in a while. Yeah. Let's see. Mole rat. Nope. We want rat roach. There we go. Uh, well, good news is it only does one radioactive physical damage, so... Okay. Am sure I within close fine. of Rage and Kate? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're going to take two physical and two radiation damage. Okay. Um... So am I within close range of Oh yes, Rage yes you King? are, so you could use your children of Adam. I, I will absorb the radiation for that. Oh, he can absorb all of it? Yeah, so you're still going to yes. take the two physical, but you won't take the radiation. Okay, and the two physical, is that in a particular... Well, actually, they all have both. One. Oh, they do, they do. I just have to look at my chart here. Uh, hit you okay. in your left arm. Okay, I have one resistance to that. So only one damage then. One damage, all right. Now, I have a very important question in role-playing. I mean, I know you said you swatted it off, but is there a scream, a grunt, or what the hell? You know, what, what, what does Kate say or do while swatting the random rad roach out of the way? You know, just your stereotypical, just like, you know, a little girly scream from being startled. And, ah, get it off of me, get it off of me! Just trying to push it in the general direction of all the fire. And also hoping that I can, you know, just dropping it down the stairs and maybe it'll land on someone else. Uh, how are things going up there? Uh, they're doing great, honestly. There's, you know what? No, I lied. There's a bunch of roaches up here and it just attacked me. And I probably have some sort of disease now. This is fantastic. Well, I did feel the touch of Adam come through this area. Luckily, I was here for that. Well, that's some good news. Um, I don't know if there's going to be more, but uh, maybe if you guys want to come up and help me here. I don't like rad roaches. Uh, he will begin up the stairs, following close behind. All right. Well, you still have the one rad roach because you didn't kill it. It's still oh, there. Oh, yeah. That's right. But uh, uh -huh. which one of you has the highest initiative? I have. I believe I do. Yeah, I, I have an eight. Okay. 
Yeah, I am 12. <laughs> All right, well, Raging Kate, would you like to smash okay. the Rad Roach? I would love nothing more than to smash this thing. All right, well, uh, I, what I would tell you is that this is a difficulty of two, and if this Rad Roach continues to live, I will continue to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right. Also, did just get a Nuka Cola, so one AP from chat. Thank you, chat. Nice. All right, uh, that is three successes, meaning you get one even more, so you're up to three overall. Well done. And then, yeah, nice. go ahead and roll me some damage. Okay. Oof. I think your bat will do this. Just fine. Yeah, I'm going to tighten my grip. I'm very angry at this rat roach, and I'm going to just yeah. attack with, this uh, <laughs> With eight, I'll let you describe how you smash it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at it and just kind of point it and go like you. And I'm just gonna smash it right on the s center of its head and the guts just go flying everywhere. More salsa, but disgusting salsa this time. It's it's bug salsa, the worst kind yeah, of salsa. Yeah, the worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> Way worse than the blood kind. Mm -hmm. I'm going to scream up to them while I'm wrapping bandages around all my burn wounds. Uh, we could have tried to get in some meat off of it, but I don't think there's any left now. Oh no, this thing, no. I wouldn't have let, let it live like that. <laughs> you never put anything to waste, and Brother He will start <laughs> scraping it off of the <laughs> stairs. All right, well, uh, it is a endurance and a survival test, normally at a difficulty zero, but because you smashed it, I'm gonna make it a difficulty of one. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Uh, this is a tag skill. Ah, yeah. There's I'll not just enough let left. That be. It's just it's gooey. It's there's not enough meat left. It's just no. Is this some sort of uh, children of Adam painting you're trying to do here? I was hoping to salvage something that we could eat, but uh, it seems that Adam has seen fit to not provide us with this nourishment. Mm, well, it would have yeah. been disgusting anyway, so... Yes, but we get more money if we have more food left in the crates. For a rad roach? Rad know. roaches are as delicious as corn. <laughs> Both are quite crunchy and good with butter. <laughs> Sam uh. raises a hand. Yes, Sam. What's butter? So you take Brahmin's <laughs> milk and you can turn that into a thing called butter. It's really good on like toast, uh, well, bread things in general. It's a really good just like base if you're trying to use that to like on a fire, on a, like a skillet. Like, there's, there's a lot of uses for butter. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. You said a lot of words there that I only stood half of them. Um, I'm a raider. We don't have that kind of thing. You know how I made you food? Uh -huh. That's a normal thing people do every day in Diamond City. Oh. Oh, that's okay. I, I'm now excited to be there. Yes. All right. Well, uh, hopefully that exit up top is not snowed in. I hope yeah, that as well. Yeah, me uh, well. <laughs> Raging Kate and Brother Hugh, you get to what's essentially a hatch that opens upwards and... You push up against it in kind of a testing way. It is moving a little bit. You got to give it a good shove to get it going. Mm. Looks like I'll, I'll let you lead yeah. this and I'll assist. Yeah. All right. All right. Strength and athletics, difficulty of two. Okay. Strength and athletics. You do have the AP if you want to add a knight to yourself. Mm -hmm. Difficulty two, you said? Strength yep, difficulty of two. Huey, All right, promise. I will use one AP to add an extra D20. Okay. So my target number is 11. Right, and you get three successes, meaning you get a momentum or an AP right back. And yeah. Oh, wait, we got to see. Okay, yeah, Hugh didn't assist. <laughs> Brother Hugh just goes, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good assist. Good assist. <laughs> so, Kate, you basically do one of those shoulder checks upwards, and the hatch nice. slams open. And as you poke your head out and you start to look across the Commonwealth, it's actually a very picturesque sight. Everything is covered in perfect powder. No signs of animals, no signs of really anything alive out there. It's just white as far as the eye can see, which is a problem 
because the only landmark that you know to look for is that radio tower and that's all you're seeing like if you were to look in the distance you just see that radio tower which is where that crash site of the train was mm. also i suppose if you were to look east you would see the ocean but what i'm trying to impress is you would get lost extremely easy out here okay mm. Mm. Yeah, luckily we have also. adam's guidance we also uh i start coming up the hatch we also have the sun is it cloudy or is it cloudy or can I see where the sun is? It's still cloudy, unfortunately. Mm. I can't use the sun to judge where I am. At least it's beautiful. I just take in the <laughs> sight. Mm. Is there anything else in here in this bunker that you want to uh, let us know? Uh, what is it? Sam? Sam it was? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I... I think you found all the, the secret stuff we had scrolled away. I mean, you got the flamer fuel that blew up in his face, and you found the caps. So, yeah, you, that that's it. Oh, uh, we we never uh, checked your friends for items. Yeah. He looks disconcerted at that thought. Isn't that what you raiders do, is pick over the dead? Yeah, so that's but... what Kate tells us. I, I, I mean, when you know a guy and you work with him for a few months, you, you, you build a brotherly bond. That also never stopped Kate before. No, well, she's a sister. I... That's a different kind of bond. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, perhaps I don't you know need these to, guys. Yeah. Perhaps you need to expand your brotherhood. The children of Adam are always willing to bring in new siblings. Oh, boy. Here we go. He looks <laughs> Have you ever you felt a yearning? something more yeah yeah I, I kind of yearn not to get my face punched in yeah <laughs> that's that's a good step <laughs> the second step of that is accepting Adam into your heart okay how do I do that tell me how much radiation have you experienced um enough that I've had to get rat away twice that is uh, another good start, because Radaway helps you as a form of sacrament. You're able to cleanse yourself and prepare your body for more radi radi radiation. Perhaps over time you'll be able to be chosen by Adam and join with us. But for now, we will continue your teachings as we haul the rest of these supplies out. The professor is just madly writing everything down that he just said. <laughs> <laughs> For shits and giggles, Hugh, give me a charisma and a speech, please. Difficulty of three. Difficulty what I would, three. What I would tell you is if, if you succeed, Sam is actually going to buy into what you're selling. Well, then I've got to buy. Yeah, we got some yeah, AP it, here. <laughs> you know, I'm going to spend all three of it. <laughs> Adam's <Yes>. will. <laughs> All right, so it is a tag skill. All right, Ugh. two successes. Uh, do you I will have any spend, luck to re-roll? I spend oh, a man. luck to re-roll. And this is something I always confuse. Am I supposed to select the ones I want to re-roll? Or yes. the yeah. ones I want to keep? Select the ones you want to roll again. Okay. Uh, so you why? can't re-roll those for 15. Can I try, I only can have I try one luck help? point anyways. So you need one more success. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would like to assist. All right. Or unless How are you assisting? <laughs> I mean, see, my uh, my charisma speech is not very high, though. But <laughs> I could do a very good impression of it. <laughs> you could roll a complication, which can make this thing funny. Even funnier, yeah. Go for it. Okay, it's you know it might as well here. Okay. Because it's gonna end with me punching his head off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It's Adam's All will. Right. It yes. happens. <laughs> so yeah, I have a very uh, low target number here of um, four. Oh. So. I mean, I believe. I believe. I believe. All right. It's all an atom. I'm yes. an atom believer. Come on, show me his will. Nope, all right. Twelve is fortunately not. So uh, yeah. Sam just kind of squints his eyes at you and nods along, like he's he's understanding what you're saying, but he's not buying any of it. But you can Adam, try again. In the Adam future. will find his way into your heart. 
Okay. Uh, do do we want to get going before you know? We only have so much food if we don't want to get into these crates. So, yeah, you know. yeah. He, he's he's right. We should get going back to Diamond City. Uh, can I try to make shift? Ooh, no, it's too cold. My water will freeze. I can't make shift a compass either right now. So yeah, I'm out of I'm out of decent ideas to find out which way's north. Okay. Wasn't the is the snow um too deep where we couldn't perhaps dig and find the railroad tracks once we get back to the crash site? I would say you could probably find the railroad tracks easily yeah. enough. Yeah. Because that would take us right back. Right. You could also just find the trains that Close are next enough. to the tracks. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think we could try that. Okay, so we just want to backtrack. So we want to go to the trains, uh, head back to the Red Rocket, and then head back to Diamond City. Because mm -hmm. backtracking would probably make it easier because we at least kn roughly know where we're going. Yeah. All right, time for more travel rules then. Let's go through the steps. So we're going to ask five questions. For every yes, it's plus one. For every no, it's minus one. Is the journey along established routes between settlements? No. Actually, wait a second. That should be... Kind of is. Yeah. That is now, since we now know how to get there. Right. So, okay, so that's a minus call. one. Stays at a zero. Are the... Actually, I think I wrote this wrong. I think it's it's no is plus, is minus one. Yeah, I might I might have this backwards, because as I'm reading this, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So, difficulty will go down to zero. Are the PCs familiar with the area? No, because it's snowy. It goes up to difficulty of one. Is the area under control of a friendly faction? Nope. Goes up to difficulty two. Has the group been given good directions, or do they know of prominent landmarks? I kind of want to yes. say yes here. We're purposely um, backtracking. Right, Christmas but I'm speech, also wondering. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'll That's say it's. Said. I'll say it. It stays at two. Oh, here's it is. Here are there obstacles in the path? So if I did my math correctly, that is difficulty of three on this one. Okay. Okay. So now we need to pick who's the navigator. And by default, it's endurance and survival, but you can give me a case for something else. Kate, would you like to lead like you did before? Yes, I can do that. All right. Um, difficulty three. Huh? Right. Well, there's uh, the next step is the speed. Um, you can go oh, yes. cautious, which would reduce the difficulty down to a one, but it would take 48 hours to get back to Diamond City. Alternatively, you could do normal, and it would take 24 hours, so a stint of 12, and then another stint of 12. It's and that would reduce less. difficulty to 2. Or, you could get all the way to Diamond City within 12 hours at a difficulty of 3, but your complication range would be a 17 to 20. Ooh. I'm cool with fast. I kind of want to do fast, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have no action points currently. Would yes, I spent them all trying to create a gun first. <laughs> hey, that's, that was your choice. It um, is Adam's will. We yes. could. Uh, actually, I don't know how this would work. Since we have uh, Sam with us, would he be able to aid us in this test, or would he not? Uh, he this would be PCs. to some degree, but the problem is there's only how many people can assist at once, and I think the limit is one but let me double check that yeah i don't I remember believe that so um so there's group tests and there's assists assistance yeah i wasn't sure this would be a group test or no nah, this is definitely an assistance because it's because okay. that's the reason you nominate a navigator because they're the uh, one that does the main role okay so if i went by intelligence because i'm just going off of my knowledge and i'm following our landmarks of this is clearly the ocean over here and behind us. I could argue that I use science plus survival, which would get me a 11. But I think you're also at 11, Kate, as well. Let's see. Yeah, so it was survival and endurance. So mm -hmm. yeah, survival, endurance, nine, survival. That would be 12 for me. Yes, and you're tagged in survival, correct? No. No? But still least, 12. Yeah. So I think we let you lead, and I will assist if needed. Okay. I will just roll as normal. Remember, you can give me AP for dice. Too late now. She rolled. Nope. <laughs> All true. right. So that's uh, zero successes. Do you have any luck by chance? I do have one. It's my final one. And this seems like a good time to try. 
Yeah. Very good time and it, to do it. It was difficult T3 still? Yes. Mm -hmm. so do we basically have no chance? Well, you have, have to get to at get... least Ooh. one success for assists to matter. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. I can't assist unless you roll a one, at least one success. Okay. Rerolling. Okay, Ooh. no, that's good. That's very good, because that goes okay. to two successes, so now we have a really good chance here. Atom so, has smiled down upon me. Now I'm going to do survival and intelligence. Mm -hmm. Complication you said Question it was for the range, is for fast. Uh, it is 18 to 20. Or sorry, 17 um, to 20. Oh, I rolled. A comp. I rolled a comp. I accidentally rolled not as an assist, but as two dice. All right, do you have any so way we'll to get rid of that one. 17? I do not, because I had to use my last luck point to try to get through the door, which we could have gone backwards. All right, let me double check the rolls, because this is kind of a matter here. Um, and chat, if you see it, that 11 I rolled does not count. We go by the first die I rolled, because I made the mistake and rolled by myself, not as an assist. As far as I read, it's up to the GM here how many people can assist. So I'll, you know what, Brother Hugh, give me another assist. Maybe you can do a little bit better. But there still is going to be a complication. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be doing a survival endurance because that's probably my best bet. Okay. Uh, die. Ugh. So close. One so over. Yeah, and you have so no close. way to reroll that either, I assume? No, I spent my luck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm just trying to think, how can we get this last? Is there any way we can get this we... last success before we say it's a, it's a wash is the question. I think the only other way is uh, succeed at a cost at this point, correct? Right, and that's the thing, because succeeding at a cost, since you rolled one complication, it would be two complications. Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, we would happen. be in Diamond City, where we're kind of safe. Right. I'll give you that option. If you want to succeed, but with two complications, we can do that. I'm good with that. I, yeah. yeah, I'm interested to see what the complications yeah. are, so I'm okay with this. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. More we really want to get back. Yeah. All right. Oh, no. Well, time to roll on this chart here that I put in here. Let's see. Journey complications. Roll me number one. Well, uh, you're not going to like this. All food and drink carried by the PCs becomes irradiated. Oh, well. What are you talking about? I love that. <laughs> I know. That in, does that include our crates? <laughs> yes. <gasps> oh. Ooh, can you suck the rads out of it, Brother Hugh? It, only if I eat it. <laughs> oh, well, we don't want recycled food. For the people of Diamond City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, that's complication one. Complication so two. That's okay. Complication two is I'm rolling on the winter random encounters. Okay. Go to winter random encounter table. Rolling on this chart. Is that? Is that? Um. Okay. I thought that was a joke. I I didn't realize that. Okay. So as you all are traveling, back to Diamond City, um, you see in the distance a death claw charging towards the group. Oh. Oh boy. What do you do? Oh. I have no luck points to make us automatically get out of this guys for free. It's just, uh, it's just charging, charging right at us. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, prepare for impact. <laughs> I guess so. I say <laughs> oh, we we need to escape it. Uh, I say we try. We try to we try to get yeah. away. Yeah, has it it's seen us at this point though? Oh yeah, Probably. it's coming right yeah. at you. Okay, so. <laughs> Can we just try to run as fast as we can? Yep. And no roll required on this one because the death claw is going to get closer and closer and closer. And why oh, no. did you think it's going to attack you? It runs past you. Oh, oh. the power of Adam. <laughs> but then you start thinking, what the hell makes a death claw run? Oh, like no. That? Oh, I thought it found something tastier. And you turn to look and squint your eyes and you see a white rabbit. That's oh, no. corgi size, and there's just a white Wait rabbit a bounding through the snow. Hmm. Anybody have any gren frag grenades, possibly? No, 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 no. I, 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 I don't care. That's a rabbit, and it's probably tasty. If the death claw left, I say we 
uh, take the same options and try to avoid the rabbit. We should run far, far away from this rabbit. Or at least avoid it. Yes. Yes. The mariachi band kicks the tempo up a second gear, and you just comically run away from this white rabbit. (laughs) 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 Yes, I'm glad we're all Monty Python fans. All right. Yes. (laughs) So the good news, and where we'll wrap up for the evening, is you do arrive outside the gates of Diamond City. Your crates, unfortunately, have been irradiated, but what's a little radiation if it means people can eat? Am I right? Also, I can get the rads out. Also true. Especially yeah. if it's raw material. We are going to handle the role-playing side of you delivering the items to the mayor and all the fallout from that. We're going to handle that next session. Um, but yeah, that's where we'll end uh, session two. What would you guys think? I had fun. Very Thank good. You. Yeah. Yes. Very Who glad knew that survived. Wall of Snow would be the yes. <laughs> downfall of the group. Yes, <laughs> Literally I saw. <laughs> took out enemies like it was nothing. And then for Wall nothing. Snow. Because we didn't check all the doors. Okay, yeah. I, I honestly assumed if during our scavenge we would have noticed if there was a door, so I didn't even ponder the idea of looking. I, now I just know for future reference. Yep. Yeah, Sam, yeah. Sam may need a, a punch to the face. Yeah. A light one, but like still it. a punch. <laughs> I All right, see well, uh, Twitch, stick around because we're going to raid somebody, but YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you later, YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye.